Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another Victober video. And this is a very special one. I am joined by my talking amongst ourselves friends, Becky and Bethany. And we're, I have prepared for them some very ugly Victorian book covers. I mean, I, I scoured the internet. So um, let's just get started. Uh, Bethany and Becky, they, you guys are Victorian literature lovers. And we often text about books and book editions specifically. Now, um, Bethany, you are like a paperback, like trade paperback is your favorite size to read with. Yeah. Trade paperback, I think is mine. And then Becky, you are a fan of hardcovers, right? I do enjoy hardcovers. Sometimes they can be a little heavy if it's a true chunker. And then I'll lean a little bit more towards a paperback or an ebook if, if it's a book over 500 pages. But there is just something so pretty about hardback and the feel of a hardback. I like the sense, like the sensual experience of a hardcover. They are, yes, they are very pretty. I do agree with, about that. And, and, and Becky, Becky's library in her house, it looks the hard, the hardbacks look really nice. Um, My husband argues instead of buying decorations, we buy books. So the books might as well be the decorations. It's bad. So that's our philosophy. <laughs> now, before we do start, I would like to know what you both think constitutes a good Victorian book cover. Hmm. I guess not a generic painting. Like it has to Some, be somewhat related to the story. Yes. Sometimes I have seen paintings um, that are taken for book covers. Like I'm drawing a blank right now on the artist, but there's a painting of pirates that's commonly cropped and used for a cover of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. And I didn't realize that that came from a painting, but I saw it recently in a documentary and I was like, oh my goodness, that's a paperback cover of Treasure Island. I never knew that that was an original artwork from the book. So I've seen it used well. What bothers me is when the painting is very generic or it doesn't fit with the era. Um, especially if the clothing yeah. does not fit with the era. Like, I, I'm not an expert. I don't have a degree in historical fashion, but it's something I really enjoy dabbling with on the side. Um, I don't do cosplay, but I love reading about it. So when I see something where it's like that collar is totally not 1840s, I, it just grinds my gears and really <laughs> bothers me. Um, because I feel like, I was like, come on, there's so many paintings from that era. Like, you could have put a little more effort into it. So there was someone who, it was their job to pick a painting for the cover. Yes. And yes. They so could, for me personally, hmm. paintings don't bother me as long as they are accurate or representative of the book itself um, or the era. So, like, covers that have a blonde Heidi drive me nuts. Because mm -hmm. in the book, Heidi is described as having very dark, curly hair. And I'm like, did anyone yes. read the book? When they picked long blonde braids, like that's not how she's described. Um, so yeah, if it looks like someone didn't read the book or it doesn't reflect the book or the era, that grinds my gears. That bothers me. <laughs> yeah, um, I think they should you? capture the emotion of the book, like the main emotion, mm. I guess. I don't know. I like seeing that. That always makes me happy. But as long as it's pretty I guess I don't know I mean I don't really I'm trying to think of a couple oh there's a Jane Eyre um I think Penguin did a Jane Eyre cover Penguin Classics <laughs> and it was the first Jane Eyre book I had ever had and just the cover was a picture I think it was a a drawing of Charlotte Bronte or I don't I don't know if her brother did it or whatever but it just looked bad it just was like okay why is this the cover of Jane Eyre shouldn't it be gothic with like a castle or you know something yeah. like something about the setting but just to put like sort of a rough portrait of the author that looks kind of sad <laughs> as your entire front cover just like the head I'm like hmm I don't, I'm not into that. I don't know. Yes. If it looks scary, desperate, is it desperate remedies? That's another one that was scary to me. 
I don't even know what was on the cover of that. It was a scary looking female. That's all I know. <laughs> yes, it is. Did it fit? See, I haven't read Desperate Remedies. Did it fit with the story though? No. 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 Okay. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Kate, Kate can prove me wrong on that, but I don't think there was any like disturbed I mean, looking female. <laughs> I think Cytheria or Katheria, it's like no one on booktube has a consensus on how to say her name. Um, mm. I think she was a little scary. I don't know. Maybe. It was just a bonkers book. It so. was bonkers. So maybe it was more appropriate than I thought. But I was just like, just a person looking at this book isn't going to be drawn. I feel like isn't going to be drawn into it. Like, yes. at least, at least the cover should draw the reader in. If nothing else, even if the book is bonkers and it's like a whole washout, at least the cover should say, come hither. You know, you want to read it. <laughs> Yeah. Let me let me ask you this though. If the book is bonkers, but the cover is bonkers, but accurately reflects the kind of bonkers that's inside the book, would that bother you? No, I don't think so. I mean it's fine if it would. I was just asking. Yeah. That's interesting. I think another thing that bothers me about book covers not accurately representing, and I don't know I also spoilers on a cover oh if they yeah. put, like a yes. huge twist is part of the picture you're like yes what's this happening in the picture oh that's a huge spoiler like why did you put that on the front cover yes. and I know that we have the expression don't don't judge a book by its cover but let's be honest we do when we're looking totally. at books we're drawn to it yes. because it's pretty or we find the cover interesting or we like the synopsis I think the cover of a book should be reflecting what's on the inside I love it when someone can do a book cover that's subtle where if you've read the book, you understand the references on the front, but it doesn't necessarily give spoilers. I love that because you can tell that someone really put a lot of time into that design. Yes. Um, But yeah, it, I was going somewhere with this and I lost my train of thought. Oh, but yeah, if like a cover depicts one thing when the tone of a book is completely Mm -hmm. different, I feel like it's very misleading. And I feel like that doesn't do the author much justice because if you're picking up a book going into it, expecting, oh, this book had a unicorn and flowers on it and you find out it's Wuthering Heights, like you're going to be kind of disappointed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so let's do the first book cover. This looks like it should be, how, mu- how badly do you want us to roast these, Kate? Like, do I mean, should Just- I go full throttle? Full throttle. Go for it. Get out that wardrobe, Becky. Okay. Well, okay. I can't really see that much of her dress and I haven't read Cranford. But Kate, isn't it supposed to be like a bunch of old ladies? Yep. Okay. So this this woman looks like she's like maybe what, like 18? Yes. Um, she very looks very footloose and fancy free. <laughs> um I don't know. I this is what I would expect the Princess Bride to look like. Yes, or like Lorna Dune. Right, yeah. I was thinking Lorna Dune or Bathsheba Everdeen kind of vibe. Yes. Although she was dark, I think. Dark haired. Yeah, and the hair down, like it has to be definitely very, very like woodland. Like this would not be in town that her hair would be down. Oh, no. No. I mean, we can't see her ears. So depending on what decade we're talking about, points to that. Um, Also... This is just a costuming thing. And again, I'm not an expert. So if people come for me in the comments, like I will admit I'm not an expert. But the texture of her gown, I mean, it looks as though it's some kind of a very formal. Yeah. Like like she has, like she comes from wealth and she comes from money, but she's like in a field somewhere. Yes. So again, it just kind of looks very, it looks more fairy tale princess bride to me. Yes. Um, then... A, a village with a bunch of spinsters yes yeah it doesn't capture the emotion of the novel at all because like nobody's really all that well to do in Cranford they all kind of lean on each other and nobody is footloose or fancy free really <laughs> <laughs> not any of them are, are there young like they- fiercely independent women because that's also a vibe I'm getting um I don't know if they, the women would be considered they're spirited. Women. Yeah, they're spirited, okay. but they Good. do rely on each other like a lot. 
Mm-hmm. That like, there's a lot of, um, there's the stronger women. And then there's like a lot of the women who are like, oh, you know, I'll ask my sister or whatever <laughs> that are kind of, they're, they're being dominated by somebody else. So there are some strong women in it, but I don't, I don't see them as this vibe. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. I figured out what the vibe is. Okay. This is Anne Shirley getting ready to be the lady of Shalott. Yes. Yes. That is absolutely we just it. Nailed it. Which, okay. This could be a good cover for the lady of Shalott. Cause that's a Victorian yes. poem. Yeah, so it's not necessarily a bad cover. It's oh, just no, it's a bad beautiful. cover for this particular book. Right. Yes. I think the text is pretty... Yeah. Wah, wah, like, it's, yeah. it's pretty modern. Yeah. All it's right. not next. right. Not right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, what I learned from Becky this year is hot pink did not exist definitely because I wanted to I was thinking about like a a bright pink for Betsy Ray which is Edwardian era um but so it most definitely did not exist in the Victorian now these are what are these classics called Wordsworth some of their newer covers are are better they're okay but some of these older ones it's like what were you all thinking what are they sitting on how are they sitting on this (laughs) like her bottom isn't even on it Okay, that might be getting a little too far into detail, but like this is atrocious. It's bad. Ugh. Yeah, the way he's sitting, like his legs look very out of place. His torso is too long. <laughs> unless is this unless... supposed to be Dorothea? Like, I don't see this. And they <laughs> clearly took a picture of a couple and then photoshopped the fence, like in front of and behind them. Yep. Oh, it's bad. So it's bad. I feel like Dawn was trying to Google a picture. The dress looks like something Princess Diana would have worn. Yes. Like to oh. me, it just looks very 19. 19- oh my gosh. I'm wondering <gasps> if they, well, let me get it up to my camera. I'm wondering if they modeled it after oh the dress. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> that is uncanny. It's not even, is it hot pink? Like, I feel like it's like a step further than hot pink. It's, it's kind of between a hot pink and a red. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I will say I was just Googling. I don't know if this picture has been edited. So it's possible that the color may have changed a little bit, but I was like, I feel like, like I've seen that dress. Before. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's almost neon red. Like if there was such a thing as neon red, this is yeah. it. It's like you just want to erase them and just look at the fence in the background, you know, like, yes, get out of there. <laughs> it's bad. All right. Oh, horrible. Next. What is this? What? He's flying or he's getting eaten by a ghostly hound. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Sherlock Maybe Holmes this is died. after he smokes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Is he supposed to be like young? I don't know. I feel like he doesn't look that old in this depiction of him. And what's with the gun? Does he not use a gun in this one? Because I was foggy on the plot. I could not remember. Uh, It's been a long time since I've read it, but I do think either Holmes or Watson uses one towards the middle or end. Is it a revolver though? I don't know. It's been too long since I've read it. I mean, it seems like when they're on the moors and they know this fierce thing is there, it, that seems kind of probable to me. They would take it with them. But here's the thing. It looks like Sherlock Holmes is like reclining on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> Pointing his gun. Just at- chilling. Which Nothing. I know that he's sometimes the target practice indoors. But like, I feel yeah. like Sherlock Holmes was like precise enough. He'd probably have a proper stance. They wouldn't just be like lounging around. Yes. Uh, and I don't know what's happening with Watson down there. Oh, I mean, really? is that Watson? Oh, oh I guess I it's supposed, supposed to, be. to be. I would assume so. Yeah. Mm, there's I'm, just... I'm curious. The way that this is drawn, is this a graphic novel version? Ooh. Ooh it's very possible. Because that might be true. If, because this, if this was a graphic novel, I could see the cover making a lot more sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, this isn't as terrible as the last one. I'll give it that much, but it's still very odd. A graphic novel or you know how kind of the Western standard of art is really different or like Mm -hmm. North American standard, because I feel like this could almost be a quirky Polish cover. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. What do we have next? What What am I looking at? So this it's is a parrot. Island. Oh my gosh. It's and a parrot. It's just, the choices are so odd because the, the <laughs> proportion <laughs> of the parrot to the ship and the <laughs> sea and and the map and the background. Like I feel like the parrot is not that big a part of the story, also. I like this one. I mean this one is awesome. <laughs> I feel I feel like if you I don't know it speaks to me <laughs> I, I like the colors I'll say I like the colors yeah the um, colors better better than the princess Diana dress for middle March the 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 parrot <laughs> sideways is what's throwing me I feel like if we just like rotated him a little bit <laughs> we could have a winning yeah. thing here I mean the parrot is a part of treasure island but that, that's that's one example of like a more subtle reference in the book that I feel like those who really like it could appreciate. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what I was looking at because I feel like I keep having to turn my head. Yeah. yeah. And and the boat, like the ship looks so clip art Photoshop, like kind of a last minute, like, oh, yeah. we can just have a sideways parrot. We, we need to a boat in there. something else. Yeah, it just looked like they did three layers of something um yeah Mm -hmm. color scheme is okay I feel like you could use elements of this cover and a better designer would would be able to make it work but um the concept I do like yeah yeah like I feel like you could you could work with this it's not like the 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 middle march one where it's just like throw it away and start over yeah (laughs) it just it just needs some work it has potential but if if I wasn't, and I'm not an art teacher, I don't have an art degree, if I was an art teacher, I'd hand this back to my student and be like, close. Can I need some tweaking? Yes. That's awesome. All right. Next. I feel like this is like Garden of Eden meets that was, Thomas Hardy. That was my first thought. Um, it looks boring. Yeah, I'm trying to, what is like up on her chest or back? It, I guess it looks not. like it's like someone taking part in a pagan ritual, which for some hardy, that does make sense. Mm. Um, yeah. But I don't think the Woodlanders. I, just, I haven't read it. I Me mean, neither. So I can't speak to whether or not this fits. Yeah. The, I mean, usually I think the cover is like woods um, for this mm-hmm. one. I don't know. I don't, I don't own a copy. But yeah, I do love the modern library editions, though. I have, mm-hmm. I have Persimmon, yes. and I mean they're Ooh. floppy and amazing. Like it's sad when the art is like, mm, because they're such great, actual like physically amazing books. Except the editions that I have don't typically have notes, and I really love having notes. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe it's just. The, maybe there's a couple they have that they just happen to not do notes. Okay, I, I have notes in this one. I thought they did, but maybe some of mine don't. I don't know. I'll have to check. Uh, now I'm second guessing myself. Maybe I'm making that all up. Well, I know we've talked about editions before, and I can't mm-hmm. remember what we decided was the best one because there's Barnes and Noble. Oh, okay. I know which one it was. It was the one with the red spines. What are those called? Vintage. Vintage. Yeah, they don't. Because I had the valet of that one. I still do. And Becky and I were reading it as a buddy read. And I had to go and translate every bit of French and come back and make little notes and post-it notes and put it in the book because I had nothing. I was like, okay, I don't know what this means. There's a <laughs> lot of French, French, French in that book after too. doing that. I know. I was like, um, why didn't I take this in high school? I actually, I was a snob about Barnes and Noble covers simply because they were Barnes and Noble. I was like, Barnes and Noble only sells bestsellers, blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. after reading Daniel Deronda and that edition, they're great editions. They are they floppy are. and they have great notes. They and do. The introductions are always by interesting people. Yeah. They're great. I have 
they're hardcover shocker, but most of my Jane Austen novels I've picked up secondhand and they are Barnes and Noble editions and they have, I love their notes because they are not excessive. Mm-hmm. Like some, mm-hmm. there are some notes where they're footnoting like every single Bible reference or something. It's like, okay, yes. I don't really need this to understand the story. This is, this is overwhelming. They have yeah. just yeah. enough notes to provide context or some insight into the book without it being overwhelming. Um, But their notes still feel academic. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And and they, they're bound really well. They really are. I love them. So yeah, Uh, this is like a, this, this middling, like I'm just, I don't hate it, but I'm not interested in it. Yeah. You know what I think? Lord of the Flies. Oh yeah. Oh if it feels a boy, maybe. Oh, right. oh, oh heaven. no. Oh, heavens. This is like is somebody's, somebody's doodle <laughs> in like 11th grade English class when they're bored. Um, that's actually two characters, I'm assuming, showing affection to each other, which doesn't <laughs> happen in this book. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> it doesn't happen. No one shows affection at all. <laughs> I, I give I give points. Her dress and her hair and her shawl thing seem fairly accurate to like 1840s from the little sketch that I'm seeing. So mm-hmm. um props to that. But um the hair I'm not a huge fan of the art style, and that might just be me. This this might, you know, someone else might jive on this, but um yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Oh, yeah. Hard pass for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. This is right up there with the middle March one, I think. Oh, yeah. And Wordsworth. Come on, guys. Get it together. What? This head, head doesn't fit her body. No, it looks like they clip art, like did clip art for a dress and a head, and they took the head from a vampire novel. <laughs> like she looks possessed. Becky, do you have any guess? Can you hazard a guess as to what era the dress is from? It looks like something out of Greece. Well, it's weird because like the neckline and the bodice almost look Edwardian. Uh Uh-huh. But then she's got like a cape thing, which I, I've seen some cape draping things, but not ones that come down the side like that. That's a little odd. And again, I'm not like, I'm an amateur fashion historian, but yeah, the, the, the blousey style of the top, I mean, maybe 1890s, but not, I mean, Lady Audie's Oddly Secret was a pretty early Victorian novel, right? Or it was, it was 1860s, I think. Okay. Oh yeah. 1860s. It was like peak hoop skirt era. Yes. Like her, the bottom of her dress would have been way poofier. And I, I mean, she may have had some, I'm overthinking this. Um, <laughs> also, what's with the, the, the Gothic background where it looks like she's in a cathedral? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. This looks I'm like listening. a vampire story. It does. The one random detail though, that I actually really like is how her head is like popping out of the picture. Like I, I, I kind of would like to see some different and better <laughs> attempts a 3D-ish book cover. Yeah. And honestly, her staring you down is kind of cool in some ways. I just, Let's I'm getting very you strong. Have, Lady Audley. I'm getting very strong vampire vibes and I mm-hmm. don't know why. A non-vampire novel. Yes. yes. We're just mm. warning people. This is not a vampire novel. Oh no, not the night again. Sad. Also, I think this is Aubrey Piazza. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? The no. actress? I think she's on Parks and Rec. I haven't even seen it. I've just seen like her. Oh, interview. no, but- I know who that is. Yeah. It kind of does look like her. It might be. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's that actress or not. I know who you're talking about now, but okay. Another one of my pet peeves, yeah. like, oh, big hats were a thing. We'll just slap on a big hat and pretend it's the Victorian era. I'm like, no, this was medieval, right? Like, Wasn't it yeah. kind of medieval? Like the setting obviously was written or yeah, written yeah. in the Victorian era, but it was set previous prior to that. 
Again, this looks like someone walked out of William and Kate's wedding. <laughs> and then ended up on a book cover. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's set during the late 17th century. So 1600s, that is not. No, her hair would have been up. She would have had a completely different hat. The dress isn't great, but it could be worse. Um, yeah, this just looks very like 90s to me. I feel like John yeah. needs to be on the cover though, not Lorna. I don't know why. Does that bother anybody else? Well, John and Lorna. Okay, so maybe both the main characters. He's more, yeah. and she's kind of a boring character. Like, I well, that's what I'm book. saying. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't she's remember much vanilla. about her. Yeah, he was fine, but John was the best. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, here's another one. What the? Never mind. I don't want people on the cover. <laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> so I feel like Becky, maybe the clothing is pretty spot on in this. And it's got the characters, uh, right? I mean, when did I haven't read Lorna Dune? So when is that supposed to take place? 1700s? Uh, 1600s. Yeah. 1600s. I'm not as familiar with 1600s clothing. Okay. Um. So I can't, I can't really speak to it. Um, the colors look very bright to me. If I'm trying to think of something to be nitpicky about, like if you're a working class family, like purple and indigo were very oh. expensive dyes. You probably That's would such have a good had point. more browns or something just from the, again, I'm not an expert, just a little bit that I know. Um, it just looks cheap. Yeah, to me, like it, it looks as though a community theater was like, hey, we're going to do a book cover. Let's scrounge around what you have in your props room. I'm not against suspending disbelief for a play or something like I'm actually less critical of costumes in a play sure. because I feel or because I Ooh. feel like you're supposed to use your imagination. Yes. Um, but for a book cover where you're stationary. Yeah. And there's no you're just you only have the picture to look at. There's oh, no escape. On, guys, you, you get one, sh you get one photo shoot. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. And here's, and here's the other thing. Like they had to costume these people and do pictures. I feel like you could have done a really cool scenic picture with a cool font on the title. Yeah. Probably for the same amount, if not less money than it would have cost. To sure. Do this. I don't know. I'm not in book publishing. So if someone knows how book covers are made, like I think that'd be awesome to hear right. about it. But I'm, yes. I feel like I feel like if you have a limited budget, you could use it more wisely. Yes. I feel like, you know, the video that we all loved, uh, I can't remember her full name, but Katie somebody and she did the turning myself into a Christian romance model. Yes. yes. I was thinking the same thing. Yes. That's what's that happening here. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, um, is this, this, one? Um, this is like a rom-com DVD cover. Yes. Like, but for the <laughs> 90s. Styled. The, like, the, okay. The tree part is kind of cool, but I hate this mm -hmm. font or the title. Because Bethany's right. It looks like it's for a rom-com. Yeah. Like. And that's misleading because that is definitely not the style of the novel itself. Mm -hmm. It's not all giggles and cutesy no. romanticness. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Horrible. Well, that's, that is the plague of Wuthering Heights is that so many covers make it look like this, you know, uh, uh, moody Love romance. story. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Mm -mm. It's a tale of revenge. Yes. Embrace it. <laughs> Again, All I right. feel like you could have done some really cool things with like silhouettes of trees and the moors and sure. the title and just made it black and white and gray and really moody. Yes. Like moody, I feel like gothic. You, yeah. Like I felt as if you took the people out, had the tree, did some more you know, neutral colors and some shadows and change the font. It could look like there's potential there that could make it really cool. But this is the, the lime green is what's not working for me. Yes. It's too happy. 
too much. Oh, yeah. Okay, I kind of like this one. Is he pulling out I a was, hinky? I was on the fence about it, but I guess I thought it basically looked like oh, pick someone up. made a mistake like, with what? it. They had a whole painting, and then they accidentally mm -hmm. zoomed in like 500% yeah that. so it's not awful I just think it's an uh, odd kind of odd choice I don't like the bottom half like the black band with the red like block underneath of it I think with all the little I don't know details at the bottom of the red I don't like that I feel like that is distracting you mm -hmm. from looking at the actual artwork there, I can zoom in. Oh, I finally figured out how to zoom in. Yeah. Wow. I'd be very curious if this came from it, because you're right, it does look zoomed in. Um, I like the reference, though. Like, I like that it, it does capture a part of Oliver Twist, where if you've read the book, like, I looked at it, I was like, oh, I know exactly what they're getting at with this. Right. Um, I do think Bethany's right in like the bottom of the portions kind of look off to me where mm -hmm. I feel like if you could somehow extend the painting down yes. to the bottom yes. of the black and then have that black bar with Oliver twist at the bottom yeah. and you just took out yes. the red completely. I agree. I think that would look, I think that much would look better. better. I like the we concept of it. You can call us. <laughs> yeah. Call <laughs> us. We'll redesign your covers for free. But out, out of out of all of the ones we've looked at so far, this might be the my favorite, and like I actually don't mind it. But that's just my I opinion. think it's a really cool painting, and I just want to know what's on the rest of the painting. Me too. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it's like it's not wrong, the art, but this is very sixties to me. Is this based off yeah. of like an adaptation or is it just like <sighs> so here's here's what this makes me think of. Okay. I believe that the character of the Hulk was inspired by the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Okay. Ooh. Yep. Which I agree. Would, which would make sense. I feel as though the Hulk was popular and so they tried to make this cover remind us of the Hulk yeah which again isn't wrong it just right and I I have great. to ask how long is this book it is very short if if I'm not mistaken it's very, it's short. It's very short why does it say complete and unabridged <laughs> like why do you need to abridge Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde I don't understand. <laughs> it is like, isn't it under 200 pages? It's very I think so. It's like, I don't know. I have to look it up here on Goodreads, but it it's not a long novel. So I'm just kind of curious why that's included. Like there are some books that I've bought and that I've had to dig to see if they were unabridged because they were usually like a larger, longer novel. Right. And this one's just right there on the cover, complete and unabridged. And I'm just like, this is, there wasn't even a lot. Like, what is there to abridge? It'd be an essay. <laughs> I, I will say the font of the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of reminds me of those great illustrated classics books that are meant for kids. And yes. all of those are abridged. Like even, even the short classics. Interesting. So oh, maybe that's, that's why 144 pages. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yep. It's short. Uh, Just. This looks Grecian to me. Yeah. Yes. You cannot expect stone to be as pliable as clay. Wait, does that, is that an excerpt from the book? Like a quote? Or is that something they just threw on there? I think it's something they just threw on there. <sighs> Let's check the phrase. Oh my. Agnes Gray would never have allowed so much of her shoulders to be seen. That much is true. Mm -mm -mm. 
this is another one that I haven't read, but uh, knowing what I know of the Brontes. Um, also, does she okay, have her I am arm so like confused? Does she is it have, around the flame? Yeah, like is she holding a candle like this? <laughs> I it mean, looks like it. Or is her arm just burning? She's on fire. Okay, I will give them some credit. Okay, it is actually from the book. The quote okay. is from the book. I did ha- not remember that at all. Yeah, I didn't either, but it's been a while. I didn't love Agnes Gray. I should probably give it a, another go. But um, yeah, she's a governess, Becky, and the children okay. are horrible. And her life like is not glamorous <laughs> nope. as depicted she's, on the cover. And she's, she's not, not a model. A, she's not a Greek goddess? No, no Greek okay. goddess, no model. She's penniless in the beginning of the book. Has to earn her yeah. living by watching children and or terrible teaching children them teaching them but, but yeah she i don't know how much teaching she gets done because they're terrible terrible children they really are yeah yeah her her um that light coming out of her elbow is uh <laughs> disturbing it's Something distracting <laughs> yeah <laughs> oi all right yeah, that's a, a dead secret the dead secret a not wait a minute okay is it the dead secret is that what it's called yes grammar goes away we don't need grammar around here oh my now yeah, i have read looks- the dead secret and it is gothic and atmospheric but at no point is it like someone in a cave filling up with water and zombies are are grabbing them that does not happen Ooh. I know, yeah. Ooh. Someone uh, read the title who did this art and they're like, oh, it's a zombie novel. <laughs> like I I would never say there's no Victorian zombie novels. I think it could be a possibility there's one out there, but this isn't it. No. Yeah. Oh my, this is bad. Yeah. This is one of those throw away and start over because nothing, nothing about it is salvageable. No. And I haven't read this one, but the font is bad. The picture is terrible. The grammar is non-existent. I'm amazed they got Wilkie Collins's name correct. He did actually write this, right? Should we double check? <laughs> he did, yes. And they didn't put Willie. They put Wilkie. Oh, well. Uh, no. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. What bad corner of the internet? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is like Gatsby meets Lady Audley's secret. Seriously. Jeeves and Wooster a little bit. Like, yes. I was going to say, this looks like a very, like, or Lord Peter by, Whimsy. Judging by her skirt, it looks like a very, like, 1912, 1914. Yeah. Like, a, a, I was thinking, like, Lord Peter Whimsy or mm-hmm. a PG Wodehouse novel. Like, yes. that's Birdie sitting there on the couch. I um, love it. Yes. I don't, I don't know who this lady is. It's Art or, Nouveau. Uh, which is sad because on the right book, I think this could be a fun cover. I agree. I'm not mad at it. Not entirely. Yes. Yeah. I just, it's not a good fit for this particular novel. But if this was like a Wode, you know, a PG Wodehouse novel, I think it would be great. Yes. And again, with the like art popping above the picture, I actually really like that. Yeah. yeah. A little dimension there. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Slap a different title on there and I think you'd be good. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have. Okay. Let me, let me, let me say this. I'm curious. Oh, I, I'd have to, I'd have to look into this, but there was a series of Dra- loosely Dracula inspired movies starring Christopher Lee um he did a couple in the 50s and then he did a whole bunch of like super cheesy like not even B level Dracula movies um in the 70s I confess I have seen one of them um it was for educational purposes um <laughs> but they were like kind of trampy and this is how the female protagonists always look so I almost wonder if this cover 
was in, either taken from or inspired by those movies because the font looks very 70s. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see them yes. trying to like mark it. There was a name for like that genre and I'm totally drawing a blank on what it is. I'll have to ask my husband. But um, that's what that makes me think of. But they were so loosely inspired by Dracula that it, you know, there's kind of took the character and ran with it. But the guy's nails are so intense. They look like almonds glued on. Yeah, like they kind of do. Like what you do for a Halloween food. But yeah, this just looks like a... His hand level. looks like a monster hand. It doesn't even look like I. When I think of Dracula, I think oh, okay, pale, um, thin. I don't know. Not like this. This weird hairy. I don't know. Is it hairy? Bro, like dark looking. Like it looks like a working man's hand. You know. Yeah. Not like somebody who hides in caves and blurs guests and. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yes, a much better Cranford where another young woman <laughs> is presenting herself. What is it with slapping early 20th century? Well, I don't I don't know so much about her dress, but like the way her makeup is done on her face, like it looks it reminds me of a Coca-Cola ad. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And if this was a Victorian lady with that makeup, she would be a lady of the night. Yes. Like, she would not be your yes. average Cranford citizen. Where is her bonnet? Like, when I think oh Cranford, God. like, you could just put a bonnet on a table next to, like, a teacup, and that would be your, that'd be your cover. You could have a yes. great, a great thing going there. This, like, yes. I feel like whoever did these titles are confused about what Cranford really is. Yes. Again, I think a totally different book or, you know, a, a cool advertisement. I'm not against the art necessarily. It's just mm -hmm. not a good fit for the book. No. It's a beautiful painting. Yeah. I can see the font feel on like um, the Blue Castle, like Balancey. Like, I was thinking Betsy from Betsy and Tasty, too. I don't know uh, why. Yeah. Although. She's maybe a little bit too pretty for Betsy, though, I wonder. Maybe. Well, she could be um, one of the other characters, I guess. I don't know. She Carney. just kind of, yeah, she just kind of gave me sort of that, like, I don't know, the vibe of some of the artwork. You know, they had yeah. very round faces and yes. kind of pronounced, like, lips. This is so cute. Oh, see, this is another one where, like, I like the picture. Isn't right? that an ad for something? <laughs> I feel like I recognize this artwork. What is that from? I mean, it, I mean, it looks very, like, Norman Rockwell. Yes, not yeah, quite it looks style. like a very quintessential 50s. All-American. All-American. You'd find it in a good housekeeping magazine, kind of the good housewife type advertising. So I love the style. Oh, yeah. Um, pretty oh, sure wow. women weren't wearing dresses or having their hair like that uh, when George Eliot was writing books. <laughs> or men wearing ties and their suit yes. jackets like that. Like, that's not the right era. I am so curious about what the annotations are like in this edition. For yeah. sure. Annotated. Mm. Wow. Damn. Oh my. Okay, who took the Phantom of the Opera cover and slapped it on Dombey and Son? Does the theater play a role in Dombey nope. and Son at all? Yeah, it does. Does it? No, I, I was agreeing so. with I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like, no. Oi, 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 oi. Random. So oh, random. Random. Oh wait, wait. Oh, what was that? Okay, Dr. Jekyll again. Yes. Okay, so he's halfway through his transformation in this picture. <laughs> yes. That's slightly I mean, horrifying. It's not, I'm not like, I don't think it's totally wrong, this cover, but it's no. just not right either. No, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. It's not wrong, but it's definitely not right. The concept wow. is really cool. Yes. 
I just think the play, like the way his face is, and he ends up looking more comical than they probably intended. Yeah, it's too funny. That's yeah, it looks yeah. almost like it could be like diary of a nobody. Yes, slap yes. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely doesn't capture the emotion of the yes. the novel. Okay, you got a glimpse of this next one. Oh no. Okay, this is one of my pet peeves. Any romance novel looking covers on Victorian literature is just like, what? What? No. <laughs> it's this look. Ugh. This is just. I feel like this looks like a like Phyllis Whitney romantic suspense. Yeah, comic. I was like, this looks like it's set in like Italy or Greece or like the Mediterranean or something. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's warm, you know, you can see kind of the blue behind there. Oy. Um, and the flowers, like it looks very bright, or like um oh, what's the Mary Stewart novel that's set in Moon Spinners? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The dress doesn't quite fit yeah. with that, but but the right. the, the, the coloring makes me think of that. Um, yes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely yeah, not Thomas got. Hardy. Oh yeah, here's oh, another, another one. one. Oh, oh, classic romantic fiction. Okay, note the TP in the background. Oh, okay, so there is that part towards the beginning where they're building the fires. Right. for Guy Fox Knight. And so they do talk about, I forget exactly how they're described, but they're they're built kind of like that with the wood stacked up. Oh. But, but they were not covered like a teepee. This looks like a bad Pocahontas story. It does. Yes. Um, <laughs> Like someone really romanticizing, like going even beyond what Disney did and doing like a Pocahontas, John Smith kind of story and just. Oof. Oof. Where are you finding these covers? Google I it. Say, is, and I, I, I kept going to like the like 10th page. Oh, there you it, go. In, the way we live now. What am I looking at? I feel like this could be cute on a middle grade or a YA novel, but yes. um, like Kiki's delivery service. Yeah, like that'd be cute. Mm-hmm. I don't but think they were is- wearing mini skirts like that. <laughs> what I love is it says three, like the way we live now. Three. Did they make other covers for the other two volumes? Oh, that'd be interesting. I don't know. And what's with the original with the orange? And the big L. I'm just confused. <laughs> That's what I'm saying about most of these. I'm, I'm totally lost. Like, what's happening? What is this? I wouldn't even think this is a cover for an Anthony Trollope novel. Like, I mean, unless his I, name was on it. Like, it's just so bizarre. It is. I will say, I think with some of these books that are in the public domain, if you're a very small or independent publishing company, like, these are books that you could print for free. So just slap on a cover and yes. legally you could, you know, make a small profit. So I'm wondering if that's why some of these covers were so bad. Cause I was like, what public domain books could I sell? Good point. Or whatever. Like we just need to slap. We'll just on try there. on any kind of cover oh, until it sells. I want to know how many people were motivated to buy this. By Do we this know cover. that the girl is walking? Can we can we see her dog? We don't or see it. it cut off? Are we just looking at a leash? Or is it is it connected to the train? Her body looks very uncomfortable. Also, yeah, yeah. It's like her legs are leaned back. Yeah, like and buckled, buckled while her abdomen is forward poor yeah. girl she looks like a sad barbie yeah <laughs> oh boy okay this one 
it's not awful, but I just think the moths are real random. And it's kind of cheesy. I mean, moths to a flame. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, I don't like how great the text looks, looks and then I think yeah. it's pretty anticlimactic. Yeah. I agree. It's boring. I have low expectations yeah. looking at this cover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's too, it, the metaphor's trying too hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Another great Lorna Dune. Oh, my. I just don't like the artwork on this at all. Like, I don't even think for another book I would like it. She looks like she's smelling something stinky. <laughs> yeah. And he looks like he got hit in the face by, like, a frying pan or something. Like, where's his nose? Somewhere in there. So, oh, yeah. And I can't tell, like, it almost looks like she's pushing him away. Like, no. It's like a tortured romance. Like, oh, I can't stop yeah. myself, but please leave me. <laughs> the riders are coming. Yes. I don't know what with the horses in the back. It's just a little random. I guess they just had to fill that space. They felt. I guess so. Ugh. Man, Lorna Dune's got some doozies. Oh, this looks like a self-published one. This Look at looks, that font. This looks like a young and up-and-coming artist in 1998 released their first CD. Solo album. And they're trying to be like Christina Aguilera. Edgy. Or Avril, or Avril Lavigne even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like this isn't even a historic cover. There's like nothing about this that you can... You can you can barely read the text. The text is obscured by the colors, and that's that's really done. I recognize the font. I mean, that's something that you can use in Word. Yes, I'm drawing. That's right. Is it like Lucinda calligraphy or something? I I think might something. Mm. It's illustrated. Yeah, by this person illustrated. Yes, I don't know. We may need this copy. There's another Wuthering Heights. Slightly obscured by the price tag, but I just had to 25 cents. Oi. 60s, you think? Yeah, 60s or 70s, probably. I mean, it's better conceptually, it's better than some of the other covers because it's like mm-hmm. they're separated, they're looking off. Mm-hmm. Sure. You get a little bit of, I mean, it looks more like a field than the moors, but um, yeah. you, you get some moodiness. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's just we've seen better covers before. Yeah. Uh, for Wuthering Heights. Um, this just feels dated and. Yeah. Kind of it's, like, I yeah. do think it kind of captures the vibe. Sure. I just yes. don't think it's attractive. Right. I Wait, agree with that. Well said. Oh, he looks like Keanu Reeves. He does. Okay, wow, he does. This looks like a bodice ripper, Wuthering Heights. There is actually out there. There, there's like steamy retellings of Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. Really. Oh, I'm sure. So wow. this looks like a cover for that, like a fanfic type. Also, it. I can't tell if it's just the way her arm is positioned, but it almost looks like there's like a sun flare or something by her elbow. You see how it kind of curves? It like almost makes a circle. Yes. Also, Mm -hmm. it's winter time (laughs) and like icy. Keanu Reeves meets a brunette Elsa. Yes. Yep. It's what I it's what I would call this. Oh. Oy. You found so many ca- Oh my god. Also, yeah, this is for I hate the compassion. I hate the this looks like the cast of Oklahoma. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like yeah, okay, why dancing? can't we just get Kate Bush on one of these covers, please? She- <gasps> yes. Like yeah. that's all we're asking for. 
It would pass the flying colors. Is that so much We'd to all ask? be fine with it. Right. Wait. No. Wait, 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 wait. I will okay. say, I think I didn't realize when I saved it that it was a ballet program cover. I was um, going to say. So the dramatic poses, I'm a lot more willing to accept those if it's ballet. Yeah. So I was going to say, it does look like she's wearing dancing shoes. So also um, explains why they look as though they're in a cast for a musical Mm -hmm. (laughs) if they are on stage. Yes. So forgiving. Yes. I will forgive it if this is a cover for a ballet production. But if this was a book cover. Yes. um, Unforgivable. Yes. (laughs) A little odd. Now I'm curious. Is there actually oh, a sorry. ballet? Sorry, is there, there a is. ballet? There is. Wow. And there's a musical. And there's a Jane Eyre musical. Interesting. Oh wow. So. All right. My down. favorite is the boa neckline. It's just my absolute favorite. Holy and I love how it looks like Snow White. Yes. Look at her I... hair. And also how the bow on her headband has ended up looking like devil horns in the world. Yes. Wings. Okay. You know what this would be a slightly less horrible cover for? Would be Daphne de Maurier's Rebecca. Yes. The bow is like, still weird. wearing like the ruffled shirt with the bow tie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks like 70s. Like, I didn't notice the ruffles on the shirt until you pointed them out. That looks very 70s disco to me. Greg Brady starring in Wuthering Heights. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'd actually oh. read this book, but I'd be expecting, like, like Becky said, Re- Rebecca or Mary Stewart plot. Yes. I think, did we get through all of them? Let's see. That was an impressive. I also find interesting the repeat titles. Like, Wuthering Heights really seems to have a reputation for having bad covers. And... Lorna Dune. Lorna Dune. Well. What was another one? Some Thomas Hardy across the board. Yeah. Yes, that was, we got through 30 covers. That, wow. I'm impressed we, we found that. that many. Oh. She's that probably was, like, and there was more. <laughs> I know, because so I only, I, I could have, I could have, what do I want to say? Gone deeper. Gone farther. <laughs> Found more terrible covers, but it was too painful of a process. Oh, I've I had to stop. Maybe next year we can do a part two. Yes. <laughs> Roast part two. That was something else. Yes. Also, I feel much, like please. I need to say I am not good at drawing. So if I were ever commissioned to design a book cover like any of those would probably be better than something I could actually physically make. But I feel like I could dream up some better Yes. Oh, well, thank you everyone for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And yes, just laughed along with us.